This video is an introduction to the SNAP Toolbox, the Sentinels application platform. SNAP is an ESA open source software for the scientific exploitation of Earth observation missions. In particular, for the use of data from ESA missions and ESA third party missions and from the Sentinel missions. It is available to download from the STEP website, the Science Toolbox exploitation platform. In this video, first we will see the software interface the Windows layout and available functions. Then we will open and visualize a Sentinel-1 ground range detected image and demonstrate some basic processing functions. These will include subsetting, calibration, speckle filtering, terrain correction and image export. When you open the software, you'll notice Product Explorer window. This is where you see the images when you first open them. You'll see a world view where you can see the footprint of the image on a map of the world. And then you see the main image viewer. You will also see a number of menu options at the top. So if we select File, Import, SAR Sensors, you can see a list of SAR missions that SNAP is compatible with. If we select the raster drop-down box, we see the functions that are generic to both optical and radar imagery, whereas in the optical drop-down box, we see the functions specific to optical images, and in the radar, the functions specific to radar images. We will now open a Sentinel-1 ground range detected image. We can do that just by selecting the image in the original zip file as you download it from the Sentinel data hub and we can just drag and drop that into the Product Explorer window. Here we see a little plus icon where we can expand the folders. We see a folder containing the metadata. If we double click on abstracted metadata, here we see a number of information about the image. We can see the, uh, the name of the mission, the antenna pointing, the acquisition mode, interferometric wide spot in this case. We can see the acquisition date and time. Here we know that the, satellite was uh, the image was acquired while the satellite was descending. And it contains two polarizations, VH and VV. We can now close this window and look at the actual imagery. So if we expand the bands folder, here we see the, two, the bands for the two polarizations and we see the amplitude band and also a virtual band created for the intensity, which is just the square of the amplitude. So this is a virtual band, meaning that it is created, it is created on the fly. It is not actually written to the file. To view these bands, we can just double click on one. and the image will open in the main viewer. So this, we can see from the image footprint that this image was acquired over Geneva. And here we have quite heterogeneous land cover. So we have mountains. If we zoom in, we can see the city of Geneva. We can select the hand icon here to pan. And we can use the mouse wheel to zoom. We can also use the navigation tab here to zoom in and out. So here we have the city of Geneva. We have Lake Geneva. We have agricultural areas, we have, here we see agricultural fields, we see forest areas, mountains, water, the airport and the city. So this is a very heterogeneous area. What we will do now is to take a subset of this area, including water, urban, agriculture and mountains, and then we will work only on this subset area. To take a subset, we can select the extent of the subset we wish to take by zooming in to the main viewer. Then we select raster, subset. And here we see the extent of the subset in the blue rectangle. We can also change this. If we know the precise geographic coordinates we wish to subset, we can select geocoordinates here and put them and put the, the boundaries of the subset rectangle here. So now we will select OK and here we have our subset image. Again this is created on the fly 
So if we wish to save it, we'd have to go to File, Save Product. But we can just leave it the way it is. We will now close this viewer and we will look more closely at this subset. So here again we have the same two bands. And here we have our subset image. We can compare the two polarizations of this subset by opening the two bands in two separate viewers and then we can select window tile evenly. Then in the navigation tab we ensure that these icons here are selected. These are to link the viewers and link also the image cursor, the mouse cursor. So here we can zoom in and out and pan around simultaneously for both the channels. What we will now do is to do a calibration. So an essential processing step, whenever you want to compare images, is to do a calibration. So we select radar, radiometric, calibrate. So here we transform the pixel values from simple digital numbers to a physical quantity, which in this case is backscatter. And here we can select the type of calibration we wish to apply, either sigma naught, gamma naught or beta naught. By default, sigma naught is selected. So here in the input-output parameters, we specify the input product we wish to calibrate, in this case the subset. And here we can specify an output file name. So notice how by default, snap will include a suffix or a prefix to the input file name, depending on the type of processing you, you will apply. So for the subset, it created this prefix subset underscore zero underscore of underscore and then the original file name. When, you, when we do a calibration, it creates a, a suffix underscore cal. So what we will do is we will shorten this file name a little, we will remove this prefix and we will also, uh, we will keep only the name of the satellite mission, Sentinel-1b, the image acquisition mode, interferometric Y-swath, the fact that it is a ground range detected product and high resolution and it is processed to level 1 and it is dual polarization with VV and VH. And here we have the uh, full date and time of the beginning of image acquisition. And here we have the full date and time of the end of acquisition. We will remove all of the characters from here on in order to shorten a little the file name. And we will only mention here that we have subset of the image, so I'll put crop. And here we have underscore cal. And then we select run. Now we can close this. And here we have our calibrated product. Let's now close these images and open only the calibrated product. So if we go to the color manipulation tab, we can see the image histogram. If we select 95%, we zoom to 95% of the pixels. And here we can apply stretching. In general, it is easier to work with images in decibel format rather than in linear format because you have a very big difference between uh, high backscatter and low backscatter. So if we convert that to a logarithmic scale, then we have a, a histogram that's much easier to work with and an image that's easier to visualize. So what we do to convert to decibel is to right click on the band. So we right click and we select linear to from dB. And here we select yes to create a new virtual band of the decibels. And we do the same for the VV. Now if we, we can close this and we can view the decibel image. And here we have a, much, a histogram that's much easier to work with. Okay, so we can stretch this image. We can also view the VH. Now notice how if we zoom in, we see a lot of image speckle here. So a common processing step is to do a speckle filtering. Now note, note that speckle is not noise, it is a physical phenomena. 
if you were to acquire exactly the same image over exactly the same area, and if nothing had changed on the ground, then the speckle would be identical. Unlike, for example, thermal noise, which is random, speckle is therefore uh, a physical phenomena. So we go to radar, speckle filtering, single product speckle filter, and here we can select in the processing parameters tab the kind of speckle filter we wish to apply. There are a huge number of speckle filters here. Uh, we will apply the leaf filter and we will apply a speckle filtering of 3x3. Three three. So it will average over a 3x3 three three window. And here we can select our output file. And here we have our speckle filtered product. We can compare the speckle filtered and the non speckle filtered product simultaneously. Again, we convert to decibel. And here we can convert, we can compare the VV in the speckle filtered VV channel with the non speckle filtered channel. we can apply the same stretch in the speckle filtered product and if we zoom in we should see a slightly cleaner product now notice how the geometry is not exactly as you would imagine it to be if you were to look at a map so this image was acquired in the satellite geometry and if we wish to project this onto a map, onto a map system, we need to do a geometric correction. To do that, we can select radar, geometric, and here we have the option to do an ellipsoid correction, or we have the option to do a terrain correction. The difference is that terrain correction takes into account also the terrain, while the, while the ellipsoid correction does not. Because we have lots of mountains here, we will do a terrain correction. So here we have a number of different algorithms to do a terrain correction. We will select the range Doppler terrain correction. In the input output parameters tab, here we can specify the input product, which in this case is the speckle filtered product. And here, by default, SNAP will include an underscore TC to the process product. In the processing parameters tab, here we can, we can select the uh, digital elevation model we wish to use for the terrain correction. By default, the SRTM, 3 arc second, the 90 meter SRTM is selected. But here we can select other DEMs if we, if we wish, or even an external DEM if we have our own DEM. What SNAP will do, if you leave this as default, is it will automatically download the SRTM tile that covers this area, if you do not already have it in your installation folder. So for that, you need internet access. If you do not have it, you can obtain the SRTM from a different source and put it into the relevant folder, which you will find in the help file. So here we can also select uh, a different map projection if we wish. By default, the, w, the WGS84 in decimal degrees is selected, so geographic lat long. But here we can also select many other types of coordinate reference systems. We will leave it as the default and we will select run. If we expand this terrain corrected product, we go to the bands and what we will now do is convert these again to decibel. So for the VH and for the VV. But what we will now do is to save these to an actual band that are written to actual bands written to a file. So instead of being virtual bands, they become actual bands of the image file. So here we select convert band for each one, convert band, and then we save the product. So we go to file, save product.
Now we will view an RGB composite of these two bands in decibel. So we go to Window, Open RGB Image Window, and here we can select an RGB composite of these two bands. One common RGB composite is to select VV for red, VH for green, and the difference between VV and VH for blue. Notice that when you convert an image band to, to decibel, then if you take the ratio of that, it's equivalent to taking the difference in linear scale. So what we will do now is we will select v, VH minus VV, and then we will visualize this product. So this icon here is to create an expression. Here we can create any kind of expression we like between the bands and visualize them in one of the channels. Then we select OK. And here we have an RGB composite with VV as red, VH as green, and the difference between VH and VV as blue. Now we may wish to export this product. We can do that by, collect, by selecting File, Export, and here we can export it to different types of file formats, such as GeoTIFF or MV format, NetCDF. Or, if we wish, we can also right-click in the image and select Export View as Google Earth KMZ. And here we can select an output folder and an output file name. Let's call it Sentinel-1 RGB. And then here, if we select Save, we, set, we save it to Google Earth KMZ format. And when the export has finished, then we can simply browse to the KMZ file. And if we have Google Earth installed, and we double click on that file, then it will open in Google Earth. And here we have the product open in Google Earth. That was just a very short and quick introduction to Snap. I hope you found it useful, and thank you for watching.